All right, number 19 says to investigate whether the consumption of beetroot juice enhances exercise performance. A researcher selected a random sample of 50 student athletes from all the student athletes at a college. The athletes in the sample were randomly assigned to one of two groups. In one group, 25 athletes were given a daily dose of beetroot juice. And in the other group, the remaining athletes were given a daily dose of a placebo. At the end of six weeks of exercise training, the researcher compared the performances of the two groups based on the design of the investigation, which the following is the largest population, population to which results can be generalized. Okay, so we took a random sample of 50 student athletes from all the student athletes at the college. So it's probably gonna be um, all, students at, all student athletes at the college. So, um, no, the largest, not all students, not E or D, C would be the best answer. Since they were randomly selected, we can, um, we can generalize it to all the student athletes at that college. Or number 20. Do not a little bit. All right, so the college researchers wanted to know what conditions people are more likely to complete and return a survey. That's an interesting uh, study. Oh. <clears throat> Um, the researchers prepared three sets of identical surveys and used three methods of delivering and returning the surveys. Um, the methods are described as follows. In a class, the surveys were given to students in a class and students were asked to return completed surveys to their instructor. Psychology, the students were given to, the surveys were given to students participating in the psychology experiment and students were asked to return completed surveys to the collection box in the hallway of the psychology building. And the dining hall, the surveys were given to students in the dining hall and students were asked to return completed surveys to the collection box outside the dining hall. Okay, so this shows the percent of surveys returned and not returned for each delivery method. So it looks like the in-class ones had the highest rate of return. Dining hall had the least. So which statement about delivery method and the rate of return is supported by the graph? Um, there's a positive association between delivery method and rate of return. No, you can't say anything about the association because they're not, they're not both quantitative variables. There's a, yeah, so A or, I don't know what they're, oh, hopefully this problem feels pretty easy to you or it's, I don't, this one, I, sometimes I feel when this problem is like this simple, there's something else going on, but I think they're really just testing that you understand that, um, that the type of, you know, environment or the, the class is not a quantitative variable, it's a categorical variable. Um, so you can't measure this. You can't determine an association because you don't. You have. You need. Um, you need. Um, num. You need, need to have this measured on like a continuum of num of numbers. So. Um, so what all we can really say is. Again, we can't say nothing about symmetry or the shape. Uh, let's. You can. We can't say nothing about the amount, the strict, the the raw count because all we can say is the proportion or percent. So we can say that so E would be the okay because this is the in-class delivery method has the greatest rate of return, which is the percent. And a dining home delivery method had the least rate of return, which it did rate. So the answer would be E. Number 21, the height and age of each child in a random sample of children was recorded. The value of the correlation coefficient between height and age for the children in the sample was 0.8. Based on the least squares regression line created from the data predict, to predict the height of a child based on age, which is the following is a correct statement. So we're, we're looking at, so now we're looking at a quant, two quantitative variables where we got um, age as an explanatory variable used to predict height.
and the uh, correlation coefficient, the R value is 0.8. So there's a positive correlation. So we can say that indeed as age increases, um, your height increases. So that to kind of, we all pro probably already know that. Um, so let's see which of these would make sense. On average, the height of a child is 80% of the age of a child. Nope, not that. It's not exactly that. The correlation coefficient, remember, tells you the strength of a linear relationship. Um, one being the strongest positive correlation, negative one being the strongest negative correlation, and zero being the weakest. So remember that R goes between neg positive one and negative one. Uh, the least squares regression line of the height versus age will have a slope of no, it doesn't tell you exactly the slope. Don't get that mixed up. There's a relationship to some extent, but not, it doesn't mean strictly that. All we can say is the slope is positive. The C, the proportion of the variation in height that is explained by the regression on age is 0.64. Okay, so the, um, remember um, the, co the coefficient of determination or R squared, or the square root of R. I'm so, so R squared is a coefficient of determination, which is gonna be 0.8 squared, which will be 0.64, if I did my math right. So the coefficient of determination is 0.64. And with that, so the coefficient of determination basically tells you um, the proportion of the variation in the explanatory or in the, the proportion of variation in the response variable that is accounted for by the relationship relating the explanatory variable with the response variable. In other words, it's telling you like how like strong this line is and accounting for all the factors that are associated with, you know, um, height, um, and you know, in your height as you grow up, you know, because obviously it's not just based on your age. You could be gender, health, um, you know, heredity, um, you know, just diet stuff like that. But it, it, there's a decent amount of strength, so it would be, so it would be C. Twenty-two. And a certain restaurant distribution of wait times between ordering a meal and receiving the meal has mean. 11.4 minutes and standard deviation 2.6 minutes. The restaurant manager wants to find the probability that the mean wait time will be greater than 12 minutes for a random sample of 84 customers. So assuming the wait times among customers are independent, which of the following describes the sampling and distribution of the sample mean wait time for random samples of size 84. Okay, that's not too bad. We just have to make sure we understand that this is a sampling distribution of X bar, so the mean of the sampling distribution of X bar will be equal to the mean of the population, which will be 11.4, 11.4 minutes. And the standard deviation of the sam sampling distribution of X bar, using um, your formula sheet, you can look it up is equal to the population standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. So in this case, it would be 2.6 divided by the square root of 84. And that'll be about 0 0.2836 or two, about 0 0.2837. In terms of sample size is more than 30, the central limit theorem is met. So it's gonna be approximately normal. So it could be, let's see, A, B, or C. So A or, down to A or B, both have means, standard deviation. Well, it doesn't it simplify it. But that's what we would get. 2.64 divided by the square root of 84. So your answer will be B. All right.